Well, Mola, thank you for taking the time uh, for an interview. Uh, okay. Could you? Hello, Yosin. Could you start by giving us a brief overview of La Mata's vision for uh, transforming Lego's transport system? Okay, so La Mata has, uh, we actually have a vision that says that uh, we want to provide uh, a world-class, sustainable, uh, integrated, multimodal transport system uh, that will satisfy all stakeholders as well as grow Lagos in all ramifications economically, socially. So that's the vision of La Mata. Um, that's a vision that we have and that's what's driving us. It's, yeah, and, and, and in that, we're now looking to develop. Um, so first of all, we have that responsibility for the Strategic Transport Master Plan, which is the plan for the transportation for the whole of Lagos, looking at all the modes, i.e. water, rail and road. Uh, but La Mata as an agency has responsibility for implementation um, as well as franchising and, and regulating just two of those modes, that's the road and the rail. So the vision is to ensure that we have this world-class system, to ensure that we have better connectivity, that we have availability of, of this sustainable transport system such that everybody can have access to it and thereby have access to uh, providing their quota or contributing their quota to the growth of Lagos. Could you start? And what role do you see uh, sustainability uh, play in this development agenda? So, I mean, in all sense of the word, we look at it from the perspective of uh, the whole world is talking green, for, for instance, and we're all saying that we want to reduce carbon emissions. We know that transportation is one of the uh, biggest culprits when it comes to um, uh, carbon emissions. And the vision is that we, are, we as an agency uh, from the transport sector, are looking to reduce that. Um, and so therefore, you think about some of the work that we've done uh, with the SWED Fund, which is uh, the looking at alternative fuels for our bosses in particular, uh, and that means assessing and understanding and then developing a full feasibility study for uh, biofuels. So we looked at biodiesel, we looked at biogas um, and to also understand the feedstock that is available, various criteria for assessing the viability of it, not just from a um, utilization perspective, i.e. the feedstock, but also how commercially viable will it be such that it becomes something that we can look at. And we know that uh, that will help us in getting carbon free in our transport system. Um, so sustainability is a big thing for us and we're actively pursuing it. Is there anything in uh, in particular that you, uh, you know, would consider the key milestones of the partnership that we've had now with uh, Lamata and Swed Fund for two years? I think uh, what is fantastic is the fact that we have actually done that feasibility study. We've started off with an assessment, we have done the detailed feasibility, and we have also defined a roadmap to implementation. Uh, and, and that has identified that, yes, we can have a commercially viable uh, biogas plant that will provide um, not just alternative fuels for the buses, but also generate electricity. And therefore, in that sense, it says we have something that will actually work. And we're now defining, we have defined the roadmap. We're now supposed to be going forward to define the, uh, you know, the policy framework around it, the uh, legal framework to ensure that we can actually work with private sector to implement that. So for us, it's a big, it's, it's really a huge milestone that's been achieved. Excellent. Um, were there any kind of specific things about uh, the biofuels potential for Lagos that kind of excited you or surprised you? I, I think it, it probably excited us would be a, a good word. Um, and I think it's all of the things that it comes with. We realize that the, uh, the biogas would ensure, I mean, it meets every single one of the SDG goals, the 17 SDG goals. It will give us a multi-fuel system for our buses so we're not captive to one thing. It will provide uh, reduced operational um, costs because, and then it helps us also to utilize our waste, which is a huge menace in the state. Uh, we're a city of over 22 million people. We generate 
hundreds of thousands of tons of waste on a daily basis that up until now has been seen purely as that. But now, uh, when we can implement this, then we can not only manage our waste, we can use it to uh, for positive uh, means within the state. We uh, the the byproducts can also be used for animal uh, of fertilization of plants. So the, I mean, the 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 implementation of this has a plethora of positives for the state. Yes, and and looking a bit broader to more of the you know, socio-economic uh, factors and you I mean you're developing the transport system in in many ways now pretty quickly and what do you see as the the positive impacts on you know other things than call it the green agenda um, with this so topic? yeah I mean for us there's uh, that means I'm generating jobs I'm creating jobs so you're looking at even with the um, uh, biodiesel, you're looking at with the feasibility study for the one plant, we're looking at over a thousand jobs. You're looking at um, beyond that, the ease of actually getting to work. So connectivity will ensure that people can access jobs, they can access education, they can access uh, hospitals, social social and economic um, activity within the state will be that much easier. Air yeah, predictability of journey times says that I can plan my time, I can be more efficient in the way that I'm working. And so therefore my contribution to the development, the, the growth of the state is that much more because I'm not spending three hours in traffic anymore. I'm spending 30 minutes for my one journey. And that means maybe I have five more hours in a day to actually be productive. Um, there is also the reduced operational costs in, in terms of my uh, public transport because the cost of the biofuel is that much cheaper than. And then from a social perspective, the ability to actually do my journey in a comfortable uh, and an and attractive manner. I'm, I'm sitting in a bus that is nice and comfortable. I'm sitting on a, you know, so all of those things in my mind will also not just be good for the commuters, but it will make them that much more productive. So from a social economic perspective, it, it, it can only be good. Excellent. You've worked now with us uh, um, for some time, and I know you also have other uh, partnerships uh, with various types of players. So what role do you see that international partners like us can, can play to contribute to your development? Okay, so that I mean, there are two major things. There's the technical support. Um, so if you think of Lamata, Lamata was created in partnership with the World Bank, and a lot of capacity building was put into it from the very beginning. So the technical support that helps us, not just in capacity building, but in this sort of thing that we've just done with um, Sweat Fund, um, the the uh, feasibility studies that will allow us to see the viability of various. Um, things that we can do within the state. But then there's also the uh, developmental agencies bring funding to the table. So if I look at the BRT, and we were the first BRT in Africa, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa anyway, and in that sense, um, it was the uh, World Bank that we worked with, and uh, the loan was um, very uh, low interest rates, and those have made it possible for us to implement certain things. We're also currently working with AFD, for instance, and they are funding us for the um, implementation of uh, quality bus corridors, which are sort of the next step on from uh, a BRT system. And we're working with the uh, Sweat Fund. Uh, one of the lines that we have, the real lines that we have, the Sweat Fund has actually taken up uh, by a grant to support us with the environmental social impact assessment for that line before we go on to uh, implementation. So there's a lot of, when we collaborate with uh, developmental agencies, there's a lot of uh, positives for us, both uh, from a technical perspective as well as a uh, finance and funding perspective. Yes. The, the, the last question. Now, there's also been interest from uh, different Swedish companies in uh, cooperating in the development in Lagos, the likes of Scania and the likes of Alstom, for example, and, and probably others. Uh, so could you comment on you know, the role you see for 
Swedish businesses as well in the development of, of Lagos transport going forward. Okay, so I mean, there's so many things we can do together. Um, we're working with um, Scania uh, with particular interest with our rolling stock for the buses. Um, uh, Lagos has a need for nothing less than 15,000 buses. Um, and so therefore we see Scania as a very good partner, not just from the perspective of supplying, but also from the perspective of maintenance and then training um, engineers on ground to ensure that uh, we get the life that we know that is possible out of their uh, rolling stock. Another thing that we've sort of looked at and I think could be good for us is the pos possibility of looking at a feasibility study into the signaling system, the rail signaling system and connectivity of our uh, rail, rail lines. Uh, we're newly building new rail lines and where we've done two, we're about to embark on a third, the possibility of having a, 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 a unified transport uh, management system that not just looks at the buses, but also looks at uh, the rail system and being able to ensure that we have not just physical connectivity, but a systems connectivity from that perspective. And, and, and therefore, hopefully we'll provide a service that will be better for everybody. And I, I believe we can work with the likes of Allstone or anybody from uh, Swiss companies in that in that regard. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time, Mimbola. Okay. Thank you very much, Johan.